All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It is Wednesday, and you know what that means. Time to continue our series and diving deeper into the lost wisdom of the pharaohs and Hermes, Tris, Majestus, and the Corpus Hermeticum. We are on all the way up to chapter 15, ladies and gentlemen, of Truth to His Son, Tot. And I'm guessing Truth is our own Hermes, Tris, Majestus. And I want to say thank you for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. It is a bright and shiny day here. Hope it is beautiful wherever you are and hope you are doing well. I appreciate each and every one of you. And this has been a fantastic series. Once again, in the Corpus Hermeticum, the Divine Pymander Original Manuscript, Hermes Tris Majestus, 3rd Century A.D. This is a new edition, 2015, so not that new. Almost 10 years old now, edited by Tarl Warwick. And we find ourselves on chapter 15 with just one, two, I believe three remaining, ladies and gentlemen, three or four, let's see, one. Anyways, let us not waste any more of anyone's time and let us dive in to, of truth to his son taught. Now, this is broken down into lines, if you've been here before. You can see one, two, three, four. And they're like little uh, three-sentence paragraphs. or And so we're not going to say each of the lines, but this one has all the way up to 50 lines. And so we'll see if we can get through all of them today and then what kind of commentary we end up doing or maybe some more of that next week. Wednesday Wisdom, ladies and gentlemen, Wisdom of the Ages. Thank you for being here. Chapter 15, The Corpus Hermeticum. Of truth to his son Tot. Begins by saying, line number one, Of truth, O Tot, is it not possible that man, being an imperfect being, compounded of imperfect members and having his tabernacle consisting of different and many bodies, should speak with any confidence? Two, but as far as it is possible, and just I say that truth is only in eternal bodies, whose very bodies are also true. The fire itself only and nothing else. The earth is earth itself and nothing else. The air is air itself and nothing else. The water, water itself and nothing else. But our bodies consist of all these for they have of fire, and they have of the earth, they have of the water and air. And yet there is neither fire, nor earth, nor water, nor air, nor anything true. Now this is very fascinating, ladies and gentlemen, because this is really the first time, I mean, not the first time, but the first time it actually mentions all of the elements except for the Akasha principle, or the ether the fifth element, so to speak, we have fire, water, earth, air, and then the Akasha principle, which is the mind. But uh, it's very fascinating that this is the first time all four are mentioned in sequence there and described. Usually it's just one. Usually fire is one that comes up often, and then there's a moist nature, which is described sometimes in the creation texts and then there is also the earthly element spoken of as an intermediary with air very interesting and so let us continue now that was up to line number four number five and if at the beginning our constitution had not truth how could men either see the truth or speak it or understand it only except god would all things, therefore, upon earth, O Tot, are not truth, but imitations of the truth. And yet not all things neither, for they are but few that are so. Now that was complicated. He's saying not nothing on earth, in the physical realm, it seems, is truth, because its underlying true essence comes from a spiritual realm. And so, very interesting. 
the because this is the as above so below and you know we get this understanding from the hermetica let me get to that we did mysteries of the unexplained yesterday our introduction to that series that was very fun so if you joined me for that thank you very much and i'm excited to dive into that in the future but in the hermetica we got this description of the how the god the sun god ra what the sun was a physical representation of the non-physical deity and so another way you could think of it as a projection from the source and then the physical form is the projection or the mirror image so to speak hopefully that's making sense and so let us go through that again and if at the beginning our constitution had not truth remember our bodies consist of all of the elements for they have the fire for they have the earth and the water and the air And if at the beginning our constitution had not truth, how could men either see the truth or speak it or understand it only except God would? All things, therefore, upon earth, O Tot, are not truth, but imitations of the truth. And yet not all things neither, for they are but few that are so. 7. But the other things are falsehood, and deceit, O Tot, and opinions, like the images of the fancy of appearance. Very interesting. See, there's that idea of they are images and appearances of that which has source, has essence, has existence, maybe not in a physical form that is appeared or made manifest here and once again i am no master of this i am just a researcher and i have a very open mind so i am interested in these topics because remember if we are looking for the ultimate questions to the ultimate answers of reality ladies and gentlemen and pardon my rambling here for a minute i mean one of the greatest questions throughout all of human history is spirituality and what is god and the nature of our connection to that whether you call it the Tao, great spirit grand organized design god whatever you call it but trying to understand this mysterious and seemingly unexplainable thing hermes trismegistus reminds us that there can be no spiritual pursuit religion more true or just than to know the things that are. And to acknowledge thanks for all things and to that which have made them, which thing we shall not hopefully cease continually doing. And then the other lesson we got from the beginning of the Hermetica was to understand this and all this wisdom of the ages and the knowledge of reality or the nature of reality and God and our spirituality and our existence and creation and the physical and the spiritual realms and our dual nature as mortal and immortal and spirits and bodies and all of these things comes down simply to, I'll get it perfect, I almost have it memorized, a pure philosophy is a spiritual striving through a constant contemplation to attain true knowledge of Atum, the one God or more simply put, reality. And what, you know, what we're doing here, and if we can use this wisdom, this knowledge, this understanding, and increase our awareness of our existence here in this place we're in, you know, as spiritual beings having a temporary human experience rather than a human being who every now and then has a temporary spiritual experience, We're going to increase the quality of our life if we can use this knowledge and this wisdom in the right way. But the prophecies of Hermes and the very first words of Hermes Trismegistus, ladies and gentlemen, right there, is pure philosophy is a spiritual striving through a constant contemplation to attain 
true knowledge of Atum, the one God. Reality. So that's what we're doing here. Boom. Hopefully you're getting value. Thank you for joining, ladies and gentlemen. I love and appreciate each and every one of you that spends time here with me and Hermes Trismegistus and Tot and Tatme and Asclepius even. Shout out to Asclepius. He was always fun in these texts because he always asks the funniest questions whenever Trismegistus gives an ultimate ex explanation of the nature of creation or reality or God. He goes, but what does this mean, O Tot? <laughs> What does this mean? All right, let us continue. I'm going to try not to ramble too much so we can get to the end of this, ladies and gentlemen, without taking up too much of your time. But I felt it important for that. I felt inspired for that to come in. Now, but the other things are falsehood and deceit. This is line seven. Oh, taught in opinions like the images of the fancy of appearance. Eight. And when the fancy has an influence from above, then it is imitation of truth. But without the operations from above, it is left a lie. wonder what those operations from above are. Maybe the workings of destiny through the astrological and the stars. This is cool. It's bringing up the elements and astrology already. So we're going to have some good, good topics here. Number nine, and as an image shows the body described, and yet it is not the body of that which is seen as it seems to be. And it is seen to have eyes, but it sees nothing, and ears, but it hears nothing at all. And all other things have the likeness thereof, but they are false, deceiving the eyes of the beholder, whilst they think they see the truth, and yet they are indeed but lies. See, that's describing more of that. The physical forms of the things that we're actually looking at aren't the, the, the essence, the truth, the, you know, the, what's the source behind the image or the appearance and manifestation of such things. Remember, it is not... As an image shows the body described, yet it is not the body of that which is seen as it seems to be. Line number 10. As many, therefore, as see not falsehood, see the truth. If, therefore, we do not understand and see every one of those things as it is, then we see and understand true things. 11. No, that was 11. 12. But if we see or understand anything besides or otherwise than that which is, we shall neither understand or know the truth. Tot asked, Is truth, therefore, upon earth, O Father? This is a great question, because that was kind of what he asked at first, and then Tatme, or Tahat, Thoth, Hermes Trismegistus, responds to his son and says pretty much like this long way of what we just read for 13 lines is how seeing truth and the appearance of truth are very different things i mean there's a better way to say that but once again like i always say if you're getting this 100 percent, then you might not be getting it very much at all and if you're not getting this very much at all then you're probably getting it quite a bit because that is the nature of all of this. Constant contemplation, a ponderation, a rumination, a meditation, a thinking about it and letting it sit and simmer. And then you get those Satori moments. You'll be staring at the trees or something. I said this yesterday. You go, aha, wow. Now I see what he was meaning by the, as an image shows the body described, yet it is not the body of that which is seen as it seems to be. Deceiving the eyes of the beholder, whilst they think they see the truth, and yet they are indeed but lies. And so after hearing this, Tot is still confused, and he asks, Is truth therefore upon earth, O Father? So he answers, You do not miss the mark, O Son. Very fascinating, because... 
the term sin translates to a missing of the mark. It's like an archery term. And this was before many Christian texts. And I think a lot of this, I mean, if you've been here for this series in the Hermetica, you could easily understand that a lot of the themes in, you know, the Christian theological understanding or canon, I forget, there's another way to say that, but, you know, a lot of the themes that show up in their creation stories and important events and understandings of humanity and God and all, a lot of this or a lot of that was plagiarized from this, or at least, um, you know, copied. Played, <laughs> imitation being the biggest form of flattery, but in this case, I don't believe so, because they called this, her, you know, this was unacceptable. This was the pagan knowledge and these were in the temples that were destroyed by the Holy Roman Christian Empire. I mean, you know, the, that's a whole different story. And we went through that in the beginning of the Hermetica. And we will go back to that one of these days. But just very interesting there as a missing of the mark. Being, you know, the, uh, not doing things the right way. But that doesn't mean... That you're just a terrible person now and you have sin and you you know it's like you have missed the mark like get another arrow aim better and try again until you're no longer missing the mark this even goes for understanding god and reality and the nature of our, our spirituality and our all of this and so even tot has you know this missing of the mark from time to time when he does not understand but this time Todd asks is truth therefore upon the earth O father and he replies you do not miss the mark O son truth indeed is nowhere at all upon earth O Tot for it cannot be generated or made but concerning the truth it may be that some men to whom God will give good seeing power, S-E-E-I-N-G, so like vision, may understand it. But is that those who have the eyes to see? Metaphorically? But concerning the truth, it may be that some men to whom God will give seeing power may understand it. Ladies and gentlemen, line 16, so that unto the mind and reason... There is nothing true indeed upon earth, but unto the true mind and reason, all things are fancies or appearances and opinions. So once again, it's just like a representation of the true source essence of what is generated and made or made manifest here in physical reality. But unto the true mind and reason, all things, so those of us that can see, that have this zoomed out, hermetic, you know, God perspective, you know, like if you zoom out of your limited ego, separate perspective, that I am just this and everything, you know, the common perspective that we live in, and you zoom out to this new awareness, and you can see, rather than seeing the appearances and taking all of this as the true essence of everything, unto the true mind and reason, all things are but fancies and appearances and opinions. 18. Tot asked, Must we not therefore call it truth to understand and speak the things that are? Remember, no spiritual pursuit more true and just than to seek to know the things that are. So must we not therefore call it truth to understand and speak the things that are? Todd asked. Trismegistus replies, But there is nothing true upon earth. Todd asked again, How then is this true? 
<laughs> See, I love this. They go back and forth. It's like, how then is this true? That we do not know anything true. How can that be done here? He's like, if you're telling me all of this, then how is it even possible that we can know any of this? Because if nothing here is true, then how is it that we can know any of this to be true that you're telling me? How can that be done here? Oh, Hermes, Tris Majestus, Father, please tell us. He says, O oh, son, truth is the most perfect virtue and the highest good itself, not troubled by matter, not encompassed by a body, naked, clear, unchangeable, venerable, unalterable good. Unalterable good. See, this sounds like the God force or this energy force, this life, this animating essence that is underneath all of the matter, but not encompassed by matter. It is within and without. You know, it's like the old, uh, Wayne, what Wayne Dyer said, if God is universal, universal, that means there is nowhere that it is not, then that means that it is within you, and is within me, and is within each and every one of us, and not just us, but the birds and the trees, and the grass, and the bees, and everything. And so if this is the case, then truth is the most perfect virtue at the highest good itself, not troubled by matter or encompassed by it, unchangeable, but ever-changing at the same time. This is the paradoxical nature of this. It's like the cycles of astrology to where it's constantly moving and changing, but it's always the same cycles. And so this, you know, this dual nature of unchanging and always changing unchangeable, venerable, and unalterable good. But the things that are here, O Son, are visible, incapable of good, corruptible, destructible, soluble, changeable, continually altered, and made of another. The things, therefore, that are not true to themselves, how can they be true? 24. For everything that is altered is a lie, not abiding in what is, but being changed, it shews us always, and other and other appearances. Tot asked, Is not man true, O Father? I think he's speaking of humanity, men and women. Is not man true, O Father? 26. As far forth as he is man, he is not true, O Son, for that which is true has of itself alone its constitution and remains and abides according to itself, such as it is. But man consists of many things and does not abide of himself, but is turned and changed age after age, idea after idea, and form after form, and this while he is yet in the tabernacle of the body. And many have not known their own children after a little while, and many children likewise have not known their own parents. It is then possible, O Tot, that he who is so changed as is not to be known should be true? Deep questions. Once again, remember, and this was the advice from the Egyptian sage god or Hermes Trismegistus himself, which was the Greek of Thoth, a combination of the Egyptian Thoth and the Greek Hermes being Hermes Trismegistus, thrice greatest. However, but remember from his words himself, warning us and giving us a, you know, how we can understand this more, like I always say, constant contemplation, ladies and gentlemen. So don't expect to just... Ah, I got this all. Oh, good. One video understood it immediately. It's not how it works. Sorry. <laughs> this may take many, many, many lifetimes. Now, so he's talking about how we change. You know, we go through these ages and our understandings and our ideas change, idea after idea, our form changes. And remember, he was saying, what is true 
does not go through all this, you know, this corruptibility, this destructibility, the changeability, the alterations. The truth is what is unchangeable and unalterable. That is the core essence. So maybe this is our spiritual essence underneath. But I think we even grow as souls. And so maybe that isn't even true. What is true is the animating life force or God force, the animating intelligence behind our spiritual nature that is, like he said, within the tabernacle of the body. And many have not known their children, likewise the children not knowing their own parents. So how is it that this is any good? But that was my words. He says, Is it then possible, O Tot, that he who is so changed as is not to be known should be true? No. On the contrary, he is a falsehood, being in many appearances of changes. But understand the truth to be that which abides the same and is eternal. But man is not ever thus, therefore he is also not true. But man is a certain appearance, and appearance is the highest lie. Tut asked, because I would have a question there as well. You probably do as well. Thank you for being here once again, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you're getting value. If you are, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And smash the like button, because that helps support the work that we do here. And we need all the help we can get sharing this with people who are like-minded. Tot asked, but these eternal bodies, O oh Father, are they not true, though they be changed? Everything that is begotten or made and changed is not true. So what we're getting is the underlying, once again, essence that is not changed is true. But everything that is begotten, made, or changed is not true. But being made by our progenitor... They might have had true matter formally, formerly. So previously, they might have had true matter being made by our progenitor. But these also have in themselves something that is false in regard to their change. For nothing that remains, not in itself, is true. Tut asked, this is line 35, so just about... 20 or 15 more. Todd asked, What shall one say then, O Father, that only the Son, S U N, which besides the nature of other things is not changed but abides in itself, is truth? Beautiful poetry of a question there. What sh shall one say then, O Father, that only the Son, which besides the nature of other things is not changed but abides in itself. Is that truth? Because that's what it seems. And he responds, O oh son, it is truth. And therefore he is only entrusted with the workmanship of the world, ruling and making all things whom I do both honor and adore his truth. And after the one and first, I acknowledge him, the workman. So see, that's funny. I mentioned the sun god earlier. The sun getting a lot of credit here for being one of the very few true things in physical reality. Once again, though, being the below image of the as above. The appearance, so to speak. So Tot asked then, he said, what, therefore, do you affirm to be the best? No, sorry, the first truth, O Father. What do you affirm to be the first truth? 38, Trismegistus replies, the one and only, O Tot, that is not of matter, that is not in a body, that is without color, without figure, or shape, immutable, unalterable, which always is, but falsehood, O son, is corrupted. And corruption has laid hold upon all things on earth, and providence of the truth encompasses and will encompass them. For without corruption there can be no generation consist. For corruption follows 
every generation, that it may again be generated. So it's not saying that these the physical stuff here that is generated and corrupted by change and alteration, that doesn't mean that it, because it is all that, that it is terrible and bad. It just means that it is not the purest and the most true. It is different, distinct from that which is pure and most true and unchangeable, unalterable, and the ultimate greatest good. Which, once again, to me, is like a complicated way of saying God force, you know, this spiritual energy, this life, this animating life force that is underlying all of the manifestation of reality and all of the non-manifest reality as well. And the functioning of all of it. And the working and the orders and, you know, as far as the elements and how that all comes together and the astrological and astrotheological workings that apply with destiny and all of this. But so don't take it like all of these things here in reality are just terrible. Because this is part of God, of it all, of Atum. And so just because it is not true and is quote-unquote generated and by being generated is corrupted or changed and alterable, therefore not true, doesn't mean that we should just hate it all and want to destroy it. No. Remember, the number one lesson from all of this is what should a man do? Tot asked his father. And Trismegistus replied, to lead his life well, seeing there is nothing true. Wow, that's funny, relating, talking about all this truth. This goes back once again to the beginning, the first words of Hermes, and he says, Write this son, or write this son, write this book, O oh my son, both for humanity's sake and for piety, reverence, honor, appreciation towards God. For there can be no religion more true or just than to know the things that are and to acknowledge thanks for all things. So this is literally like our only goal here, our only mission or challenge, other than to be of the highest good for all of reality, is to... Acknowledge thanks for all things. And then to that which hath made them. It always says to him that made them, but I think giving it a male personification isn't quite the correct way for the uh, beginners as I am, the beginner's understanding or initiation into this understanding and awareness. And so to leave it, you know, because when the masculine and feminine comes into play, then there's a lot of other aspects that come into play as well to where there is the creative force of God, and then there is the passive and the active, and, you know, all these different things. So with to keep it simple for ourselves to understand, to that which hath made them, which thing we shall not, so we, we want to see that all of reality is God. And then to know that, and to appreciate it, and then to tend to it and to keep it. Because number three, he said, What then should a man do, O Father, to lead his life well, seeing there is nothing here true? I mean, after all this we've read so far, and we've only got about ten more lines, but it's like if nothing here is true, except for maybe the sun, then what should a man do, O Trismegistus, to lead our life well, knowing this? This is... The lesson from Trismegistus, he says, be pious and religious. To me, that says, have an honor and an appreciation and a reverence. And be spiritual and have a spiritual pursuit. Oh, my son, for he that does so, he or she that does this, is the best and highest philosopher. And without philosophy, it is impossible to ever attain the height and exactness of piety and religion, or reverence and spiritual pursuit. But he that shall that... Blah, 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 easy for me to say. <laughs> but he that shall learn and study the things that are, 
and how they are ordered and governed, and by whom and for what cause and to what end. It's good reading this, because that's what this whole thing has been about. How the things that are, and how they are ordered and governed, and by whom and for what cause, to what end, will acknowledge thanks to the workman, as to a good father or an excellent nurse, and a faithful steward, as he that gives thanks shall be pious or religious, and he that is religious shall know he that is spiritual, shall know that both where the truth is and what it is, and learning that, he will be yet more and more spiritual. That brings us to, as a perfect connection to what we've been learning today about truth. For those things that are generated must of necessity be generated of those things that are corrupted. And the things that are generated must needs be corrupted, and the generation of things, beings, may not end. 43. Acknowledge, therefore, the first workman, the first workman, the generation of things. Consequently, the things that are generated of corruption are false, as being sometimes one thing and sometimes another. For it is impossible they should be made the same things again. And that which is not the same, how is it true? Therefore, O son, we must call these things fancies or appearances. And if we will give a man his right name, we must call him the appearance of a man, and a child the fancy or appearance of a child, and an old man the fancy or appearance of an old man, a young man the fancy or appearance, sorry, I didn't use fancy there, just the appearance of a young man, and a man of ripe age, the appearance of a man of ripe age. For neither is man a man, nor a child a child, nor a young man and young man, nor an old man an old man. See, we, we are not these appearances of these things. We are the essence, the truth that is unchangeable underlying it. But the things that are pre-existent, that are being changed, are false. These things understand thus, O son, as these false operations having their dependence from above, even of the truth itself. In the final line of chapter 15 of the Corpus Hermeticum of Truth to His Son Taught, number 50, which being so, I do affirm that falsehood is the work of the truth. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a boom to the wisdom of the Corpus Hermeticum and of Hermes Tris Majestus, Egyptian sage god Thoth. What a fantastic final line there. After telling us all of this about truth and what is not true and the changeable and the corruptible and that which is unalterable and unchangeable and of the highest good. But these things understand thus, O son, all these false operations having their dependence from above even of the truth itself, so that everything is not true. The way he puts it is, which being so, I do affirm that falsehood, everything that is not true, is the work of the truth. Is the work of Hatum, grand organized design, the one God, great spirit, animating intelligence. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, what do you call it? What to you is really the truth? And do you really think that falsehood is the work of the truth? That's what we've been taught today by none other than Tahat Thoth, Hermes Trismegistus, teaching his son taught of the truth. Boom, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember to seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment, through a greater awareness, through a greater understanding of the nature of reality. And so hopefully through this awareness, 
we can increase the quality of our lives and not only our lives, but the lives of those around us. Remember also to seek to discover the lost wisdom of the ages, the lost wisdom of the pharaohs, and the mysteries of our history, and much, much more, ladies and gentlemen, that we will be continue diving to in the future. Be sure to expand the description to get these books for yourself so you can put them on your shelf and follow along in future episodes and just to have it for reference. You know, like what if the power goes out for a couple of days? I mean, you might be worried about other things and what kind of reading material you'll have, but at least if you have the physical copy, you'll have some forms of entertainment. I always think that about collecting books, but also, there's a link in the description to my Etsy shop, so if you'd like to get yourself a landscape painting, ladies and gentlemen, you can do so. And as well, a link to C60 Power. C60 Purple Power is the ultimate antioxidant known to man 10 times. What did it say? Uh, did the loop. Hundred, several hundred fold the antioxidant efficacy or efficiency higher than conventional antioxidants like vitamin C. And so get yourself this Nobel Prize winning Buckminster Fullerene C60 Power. I just got myself some last week, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. The extra virgin olive oil. We all need more olive oil in our lives. So give yourself the gift of health. Visit that link below and you can get 10% off. I just checked that and that link still works. I haven't even updated. I should contact the company. I haven't even talked to them for like three years since I got that link, but it's something that I use personally. And so since I use it personally and have been for a long time and really enjoy it, something that I suggest and recommend to you. And also remember, ladies and gentlemen, that there is no way to happiness because happiness is the way. And if we can begin to bring happiness to life, create this ability within ourselves to bring it to life in the face of adversity, then all the things we've been telling ourselves, oh, when I get that much or when I have this and I, then I'll be happy becomes irrelevant because then we are there. And hopefully the entire journey is wonderful. All right. Love and appreciate each and every one of you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much once again for spending time with me and Hermes Trist Majestus and Tot and Asclepius and all the other wonderful authors and poets and philosophers and mystics and sages of the ages, ladies and gentlemen. Until next week, next Tuesday, next Wednesday, be the change that you want to see. Be the example that you want to set. Thank you. No, 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 no.